Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to talk about the ways to connect Fortran to the so-called Internet of Things. Uh, within my research, I'm dealing with autonomous sensor networks in engineering geodesy for the observation of infrastructure and terrain. And I found Fortran to be a versatile language for time series analysis. And I like to share some of my experiences. But let me start with an experience, I think, uh, or situation many Fortran programmers can relate to. So, right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is mute. Oh, you have sound. I don't know if uh, maybe I have hit it accidentally, but no, it's, nope, I guess it's, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, uh, Fortran is not easily associated with well, modern technologies. Maybe uh, it's my perception that there are, uh, yeah, <laughs> associations that Fortran is still seen at, yeah, part of the old world of computing and uh, some kind of a dinosaur of programming languages, at least in the eyes of the Lisp programmers. And when I talk about Fortran, yeah, uh, Polarith punch cards are one of the first <laughs> topics that emerge and, you know, the old mainframe and mini computers. So it's not not easily recognized as the as the modern general purpose programming languages. But let us talk about the so-called Internet of Things. Um, well, it's it's a term not not um, easily to grasp because. Well, in my opinion, it's maybe just a collection of network protocols, data formats, web services. So it's not, not that easy to distinguish uh, all the services which have well, established uh, in the last years. <clears throat> I've collected yeah, here in this overview some some protocols and uh, data formats, which are often found for Internet of Things services. So it's uh, a little mixed. We, have see, we see on the left side uh, protocols like <clears throat> HTTP, uh, remote pros procedure call protocols, and on the right side, uh, message-oriented middleware, uh, on, on, the, um, on the bottom right, no SQL databases. So as I said, it's not, not easy to distinguish, distinguish between, because Redis, for instance, is a key value, no SQL database, but it can also be used as a, a published subscribe middleware. Uh, same is true for HTTP2 HTTP uh, and also XMPP, which is a popular instant messaging protocol, but uh, there are no constraints on the payload, so we can also use it for uh, yeah, device interconnection and message passing. <coughs> so this uh, so-called Internet of Things consists of a collection of smart devices, uh, appliances, uh, services, with, which all connect and communicate through various network protocols in a lot of um, a lot of fields. 
uh, Internet of Things technologies yeah, can be found, for instance, in industrial automation, uh, or in my research topic, it's monitoring and alerting, but also agriculture or home automation. And one of the key points is the so-called machine-to-machine communication, which works without any human interaction. So instead of humans orchestrating services, all these devices, many of them with uh, unique IDs, communicate with, it, with each other auto automatically and autonomously. And that often through wireless networks, for instance, 5G, Wi-Fi, uh, Zigbee is also a popular network protocol or F RFID. And often mentioned is also cloud computing. That means that we do not provide our own IT infrastructure or run our own uh, IT infrastructure, but rely on uh, software as a service or platform as a service. So I don't want to <clears throat> advocate to use any of these technologies. I just want to state that they, are, they exist, they're there and they're ready to use and that we have the opportunity to uh, connect our Fortran applications to them, mostly by using the ISO C binding interface introduced in Fortran 2003. So <clears throat> as you has, have seen, there's no universal IoT standard. There are uh, many uh, standards um, which often, you know, covers the, the same use case. Uh, so in my talk, I, I will just give a brief introduc introduction to uh, selected uh, standards or protocols where interfaces to Fortran already exist. So let me start with a popular message-oriented middleware protocol called MQTT, originally developed by IBM. And <clears throat> it's a client-server protocol for publish-subscribe messaging patterns. So uh, clients can connect to a MQTT server in older versions of the MQTT protocol. The server was also called broker because that's what he does. He brokes with uh, with messages and clients can uh, subscribe topics on that server, publish to them and will be notified whenever a new message arrives. And one of the features is, for instance, quality of service. So we can uh, set the, uh, the priority or the, how uh, you know, to say it, um, uh, we can make sure that our messages will definitely be received by our um, subscribers. And we can also set retained messages so that the messages with a special flag. Uh, and if published to a topic, then it will be stored on the server. And whenever a new client subscribes to the topic, then the retained message will be the first message, which is yeah, already stored on the server. Um, that will be transmitted. Uh, and in order to, to establish um, sensor networks or larger sensor networks, we can also interconnect the MQTT, MQTT server instances through server bridges, bridges and uh, can uh, define topics which are shared between the MQT, MQTT servers. <clears throat> and there's also a, a, a second version of the MQTT protocol called MQTT SN, which is for sensor networks, which are even more constrained. So how does it work? We have a, for instance, central MQTT server and our clients can connect to the server either to 
publish or subscribe or both publish and subscribe. And the payload of the messages is arbitrary. In most cases, or many cases, it's a JSON which is used for the, as a data format. And we can, for instance, use a IoT device like a sensor, which is somehow connected to the uh, internet and to the MQTT server. And then we have our other clients like a Fortran application, which listens for new incoming uh, messages of a, a defined topic. So there are several uh, client and server implementations available for various programming languages and platforms. Uh, some of them, them are standalone and some can even be integrated in existing uh, software like the HP MQTT server for Python 3. So you can uh, include an MQTT server in your Python project for example. But how can we access MQTT from Fortran? Well, at first we need the MQTT client library, which in this case is Eclipse POW. Uh, there's one version written in C, and there's an interface binding to this client library called simply Fortran POW. And we also need a server. Uh, I just used Eclipse Mosquito, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and well, I can't give an, a complete example in this talk. So I'll just show how easy it is actually to uh, publish a message to uh, a topic on an MQTT server. We just create a new client instance, uh, set the address of the server and set in the uh, name of our client. In this case, it's Fortran client simply. We connect and if the connection was successful, we create a new message, uh, store our payload in the message, then publish the message and wait for completion. And well, that's essentially it. And uh, subscribing to a topic, uh, works are yeah, not the same, but uh, not very differently. We can set the callback function and whenever a new message is published on this particular topic, uh, the callback function will be called. So another protocol often found in uh, Internet of Things applications is 0MQ, which is a standalone, standalone messaging library written in C++ and it also has an C API and we can um, implement various messaging patterns using 0MQ. Uh, the protocol does not rely on a central server, just we, we can just yeah, connect um, single applications using these patterns and a key, for instance, in process, inter process, uh, or TCP um, communication. You can use it for remote procedure calls or just to forward messages. <clears throat> yeah, this messaging pattern request reply uh, just connects a set of clients with uh, a connect of uh, a set of servers. Uh, PubSub is a publish subscribe messaging pattern. Uh, pipeline is a fan in, fan out pattern and exclusive pair connects threads of a single process. So we can, for instance, also use 0MQ to do message passing in an OpenMP environment. And there are two interface bindings available for 0MQ, uh, one for Fortran 77 and uh, FZMQ for Fortran 2003. And we just need to install the 0MQ library. And on Linux, it may be necessary to install additional development headers. And we create a make fun with CMake and compile our static library, which we just link with our Fortran application. So here's an example of a uh, request pattern sender, we create a new context 
open a socket with the uh, socket type ZMQ request, connect to our uh, reply instance, create a new message. In this case, it's just the number of P, which will be stored in the zero on Q message type. We send it and close it, and normally you would add some checks and so on, but I just uh, omitted that to fit it on the slides. And the receiver is a little bit more complicated. Uh, we create a socket with the ZMQ reply. Uh, reply type and we wait for an incoming message and then we have to do some transfer magic to copy the bit patterns of the message to our to the expected data type. But we are not limited to to just the uh, to this messaging patterns in version four of the zero MQ protocol, uh, ZMQ stream was introduced, which allows us to uh, send and receive very arbitrary TCP data, even from, from non zero MQ peers. And I've implemented a very basic zero MQ HTTP server in Fortran, and you can find the uh, source code, source code of, uh, with the link I share at the end of the talk. So it may be not the, the best solution to write web applications using the zero MQ library. There are certainly better ways. Uh, and Open uh, Nginx is a very popular open source web server, which is yeah, can be enhanced with third party modules. There's even a distribution called OpenRSD, which relies on NGINX and Lua. And we can embed, for instance, Lua, uh, embedded Ruby, and many other languages. And there's also a particular third party module called NGINX link function, which allows us to load shared libraries and call uh, functions from within NGINX. And a couple of months ago, I've written an interface called Fortran Engine X, which allows us to write server set web applications in Fortran. So let, let me give a short introduction. Uh, it's very basic. Our web application in Fortran just needs to implement two subroutines, one for the init cycle and one for the exit cycle. This is mandatory. Uh, these subroutines will be called by Engine X whenever the uh, shared library is loaded. And then we have to add a subroutine which handles the request. The re request context is passed as an, a dummy argument. And then we just write our response with the response, HTTP response code, the content type here it's uh, text HTML, and then the response content. And the result is when, so then uh, we compile it as a shared library. Uh, yeah, I used uh, GNU Fortran and we link it with our static library, which contains the interfaces. And as an, as an output, we get our shared library web app as O. And in the NGINX configuration, we just have to load our shared library and then redefine a route. Uh, and this is a root route which then calls the Fortran function uh, subroutine NGINX hello. So if we start our N uh, NGINX server and open the address in our web browser, then yeah, that's a response of the web application. Uh, I've implemented a little more uh, detailed example. In this case, it's a web application written in Fortran that solves the Lotka Volterra ordinary differential equations and returns the result, result as a plot. I'm using uh, LARPAC 95 and for solving the uh, equations and the Dislin library developed at the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Göttingen, which is a plotting library for Fortran and that is uh, free for non-commercial use. And we can pass the initial population sizes 
uh, for predators and prey is get param parameters. And the whole equations model a predator-prey relationship in biology. So we can alter the output of the plot uh, when we change the initial values. And you all find it in the GitHub repository. Um, well, um, another popular means of communication in Internet of Things applications is uh, REST. It's an application protocol based on HTTP. Uh, it's a mm, complicated topic, so I can't cover it entirely <laughs> within this talk, but um, let me give an example of an REST interface. In this case, it's a time zone service and I use curl to retrieve the time and date information of Zurich and we can use any other country instead. And if we omit the file ending txt at the end of the URL, the result will be returned in JSON format instead. So speaking of curl, which is something like a Swiss army knife of network protocols and consists of a command line tool simply called curl as seen in the slide before and uh, library libcurl and we can with Fortran 2008 simply use execute command line this is intrinsic routine to call any command line tool we could call curl and then store the uh, response in a temporary file and open the file in Fortran it's all possible but it's much easier to just use the interface bindings called Fortran curl. And just initialize curl, set some curl options and provide the callback function called response callback in this example. And whenever we call curl easy perform, the request will be executed and curl will pass in chunks of the response to our callback function. Uh, it's not that complicated as it looks at first glance. We have to make sure that our Fortran function has the bind C attribute and we also have to pay attention if arguments are passed in by reference or by value. In this case, all are passed in by value. We allocate some space for the response chunk and simply call a utility routine CF string pointer, which will convert the C character pointer to Fortran allocatable character. And then we just output the response chunk and return the number of bytes we have read in our function. Um, using the client data, dummy argument we could instead also store the response in any uh, data structure in our Fortran application. So yeah another popular file format used in Internet of Things applications is uh, JSON which is part of the JavaScript standard and uh, there's also an interface binding available written by Jacob Williams called simply JSON Fortran and allows us to access arbitrary JSON data using an object-oriented API. So very basic example, we have a, a JSON file uh, with some values and then we just initialize the uh, JSON object loads the file, get the values, store them in variables, and then we can just, you know, output it or do whatever we want. And we can also deserialize uh, JSON data simply from a string. So we can combine uh, JSON parsing with curl, for example. And for what can we do that JSON and uh, what can we use it JSON and HTTP request? One use case is accessing NoSQL databases. It's uh, Apache CouchDB, which is an 
uh, document store. Uh, the database is used to store unstructured or semi-structured data in JSON format. And we can use a REST interface to retrieve or uh, add new uh, data to the database. There's also a web-based interface to manage the database, to write our map, map reduce functions and so on. And a command line example would be uh, that we just simply access the uh, CouchGB API and the result will be returned in JSON format. And we can, using the uh, libcurl interface in Fortran, we can just run it in Fortran directly. So uh, sometimes uh, interfaces are not available for Fortran. In this case, it may be feasible to just use another programming languages, which can be uh, embedded in Fortran. In this case, it's Lua, which is famous for uh, being embeddable in other applications. And we have also a rich ecosystem uh, to use. And we're also not limited to Lua itself. There are several programming languages uh, like Lisp dialects, that compile to the Lua bytecode and which can be then called from within our application written in C or Fortran. And it all works with a stack-based C API. That's a, a great advantage because uh, it makes it very easy to write new, uh, uh, write new bindings. And there's also an interface binding available for Fortran 2003. Very brief example, we have a, a program within in Lua which just, just outputs uh, a string and the Fortran program to call this uh, Lua script is yeah, using, using the interfaces, creating a new state, uh, open the default libs. We can also um, sandbox our application, open the file, push the function to the stack and then uh, call the, the function which is on the stack and we compile it using Lua Fortran and yeah, that's in the output from Lua. And uh, the same works from uh, Lua. We can call Lua, we can Fortran functions from Lua. Uh, we have to implement the function that registers our Fortran function that is callable from Lua. Then the uh, functions that should be called. Uh, we compile it as a position independent code as a shared library and simply load the shared library in Lua and can call our Fortran functions like they are Lua functions itself. And yeah, that's the output. And uh, if we do not want to or cannot use Lua, uh, there's also Python which has a C API. And uh, today in the evening, there will be a talk about F2Py, which generates wrapper functions that can be called from, from Python. And there are also uh, libraries available to embed Python code in Fortran. So that's it. Uh, on my GitHub repo, you will find the interface bindings, I've, or many of the interface bindings I've talked to about and there's also an introduction I've written in the past about programming and modern Fortran on Unix. So thank you. Thanks Philip for yeah. the excellent talk. So since we're running a bit out of time, yeah. just one short question. Do you think there would be a benefit for low level network libraries written in Fortran? Uh, yeah, as I said uh, at the beginning, I do think that Fortran is an excellent choice for time series processing and uh, it can be feasible to uh, directly access the data we want to process. And that's the reason why I think we should use it. Okay.